my journey began with that question. How can I maximize my performance while living this healthy, happy, balanced life? I discovered I was asking the wrong question. At Hinsa Performance, our mission is to help people live better lives and consequently perform better. The company was actually originally founded by my father, Dr. Akihinsa, about 20 years ago. My father was an orthopedic surgeon, fascinated by the capacity and the adaptability of the human mind and body. He was also a little bit crazy about sports. He originally developed the Hensa philosophy in Ethiopia, where our family lived in the 1990s. My father worked there as a missionary doctor, but um, during our time there, he also got to work with elite athletes long-distance runners, for those of you who didn't guess that. He worked with some of the best runners in the world, including Heilige Gebrselassie. He got to watch these runners train. He actually went training with them once. Um, apparently, he didn't last that long. He watched them prepare for races, win a lot of races, but also face some setbacks. Around the Athens Olympics, Hilo was having issues with his Achilles tendon, and it turned out he had to be operated. So he flew to Finland with my father. Now, my father was rarely nervous, but that was a pretty high-stakes Achilles tendon. What Hilo told him that day stayed with my father for a really, really long time. He said, Doctor, don't worry, it's just running. Pause for a second. One of the best long distance runners of all time, about to get into an operation, tells the surgeon, Doctor, chill out, it's just running. Running was Hylis' passion, but his identity, and his life was much, much more than that. Based on his experiences in Africa, my father developed a model that he would then adapt to other sports, most notably uh, Formula One. To date, Hinsa drivers have won a total of 14 driver championships, and 96% uh, of the podium places in the past five seasons. In Finland, we call that an okay result. We've learned something in sports. But today, most of our clients come from very, very different backgrounds. Musicians, politicians, entrepreneurs, business professionals, thousands of them. They come to us with that same question. How can I maximize my performance? while, you know, not sacrificing everything else. My father would tell them, optimize, don't maximize. Many of us live unconsciously or consciously in a way where we try and maximize every single area of our lives. We have demanding jobs. And it's getting harder and harder. Our work is more fragmented and more fast-paced than ever. An average office worker is interrupted every 11 minutes. We check our smartphones every six minutes. And then after a long day at work, we come back home and we want to be the parents or the partners <laughs> or, or like the people that our families and loved ones deserve. In our free time, we run marathons or do triathlons or CrossFit. We 
climb mountains. We play in a band. We study Japanese or Chinese or Python. We build our professional brand on LinkedIn, and uh, then we do these TED Talks. That's, by the way, all stuff I've done. It doesn't take you an expert to tell that this is unsustainable. One November morning, about seven years ago, my world went black. I was running down the stairs when I fainted. I rolled down the staircase, woke up at the bottom of it with my head bleeding. My first reaction, oh my God, where's my laptop? I realized I needed help. I was working for a global management consultancy at the time, and you know what? I actually loved my job. It was exciting. It was fun. It took me to crazy places. I got to work with really cool people and solve super complex problems. The downside was that I was sleeping on average four to six hours per night on work days and uh, you know, desperate to recover it over the weekend. I would you know, run marathons before. Now my exercise consisted um, from you know, running from one airport terminal to the other with my luggage. My diet was the contents of a minibar. I did a thorough benchmarking study and found out Snickers bars was the best there was. That's not an ad, by the way. Nothing paid there. I wasn't feeling super well. In fact, I wasn't really feeling much at all. This is me nine months after my burnout. I'm running in the desert. I have 12 kilos on my back and 250 kilometers to go. It was my first ultramarathon. I finished. But more incredibly, I was back at work with the same employer, working full time. And I was really really happy. So what changed? I wasn't aware of using any Hinsa methodologies, but I did call my father and we had a chat. He introduced me to the model that he called Circle of Better Life. It's a holistic model of human health and well-being, consisting of six elements in the outer circle. Physical activity, which is more than just exercise, it's your daily activity. Nutrition, which is, well, always individual. But there are certain basic rules which, if we all obeyed, would probably be feeling much, much better. Sleep and recovery is as much about the nighttime recovery as it is about the daytime recovery. And. Uh, I think I'm not wrong to say that there seems to be a little bit of an epidemic around that element. Biomechanics is a guy that looks like he's doing yoga. Um, it's actually linked to one of the leading causes of absenteeism. Lower back pains, musculoskeletal issues. Incredibly important for athletes as well. Mental energy is the element that I find really interesting. It's basically our capacity to deal with our daily life and environment. Mental energy is about identifying what gives you energy and what drains your energy, and coming up with strategies to manage your energy throughout the day. Finally, there's general health, which is basically the outcome of your decisions, of the choices that you make in all of those other elements. It's interconnected. If one of the parts is off balance, the system breaks down. It doesn't function optimally. In the middle, you have the core. The core is what drives you. It's what you're really optimizing for. It also had the biggest impact on my recovery. 
My father broke down the core into three questions. Do you know who you are? Do you know what you want? And are you in control of your life? Really hard questions. What are the things that you value in life? Who are the people that you value? Are you living your life, spending your time and your energy according to those values? What are your long-term goals? I mean, you're working really hard climbing up that ladder, but was that even the ladder that you meant to climb? Maybe you wanted to build your own. And then finally, who controls your life? What are the things in your life that you can, and on the other hand, cannot impact? I returned to work with a different agenda. I was reminded of the reasons I joined that company in the first place. And I was more aware of the things I was no longer willing to compromise. I also had a key realization. Better life leads to better performance. It's not something you try and maintain or achieve on the side. It's the foundation for sustainable high performance. Now the science behind this is actually really, really interesting. For decades, we've known that athlete performance is closely linked to their training load to their recovery. Nowadays, we're actually able to measure the impact of your work style and your lifestyle on your cognitive performance. We can see the impact of your sleep, of your physical activity, of how you structure your day, how you switch off, on your creativity, on your ability to solve complex problems, on critical thinking, on collaboration, connecting with other people, emotional intelligence, empathy. All of these are unique human skills, and those unique human skills are becoming increasingly important as our lives and our work changes. Optimizing for a better life begins by identifying the gaps that you have across those elements, identifying the biggest levers for a change, setting yourself some goals, identifying your boundaries. But ultimately, it is about the small things done consistently well. It's about your daily habits and optimizing an environment to support those habits. We all know that one person who seems to have everything under control. In reality, the people who seem to have the best self-control actually deploy it the least. Instead, they modify their environment to avoid having to make self-control decisions in the first place. It can be small things, like you know, having that water bottle next to you, or getting your gym gear ready for the morning. For me personally, it was about sleep. I mentioned earlier I was sleeping an average four to six hours per night. Now, I would of course like you to think that that was because I was working so hard. The truth is, I was stuck on social media. All of my friends were asleep when I got home from work, so I would you know, stalk them on Facebook. Nowadays, it's Netflix. I get back home from work, and I would like to watch an episode or show to relax and detach. I watch the show, and you know by the end of it, in the bottom right-hand corner, there is that little thing that says, Next episode starts in three, two, one, and suddenly you lost two hours of sleep. Uh, there is also that, you know, skip intro to make it even easier. I'm going to let you in a little secret. It is possible to turn off autoplay. And if you're like me, you delete the app and you encrypt your passwords. Sustainable change is about modifying your environment, creating an environment to support change, making the good decisions a little bit easier to do and the bad decisions a little bit harder to do. That being said, progress is never linear. 
8% of the people actually achieve their New Year's resolutions. Why? Life happens. In Hinsa, we talk about four modes. In the normal mode, we try and make the right decision most of the time. However, sometimes we're on mission. It can be a tight deadline or a project. For the parents of young children, it can be a baby. In mission mode, what we do is we define the minimum we're not willing to compromise, and we implement hacks to stay afloat. If you can't get the eight hours of sleep, take a power nap. If you can't get to the gym, get off the bus a few steps earlier and walk the rest. The important thing to remember is that your mission mode should not become your normal mode. And it should be always followed by recovery. Our brains and our bodies need daily recovery. It's when our muscles grow, but it's also when our brains consolidate memories, create connections, come up with new ideas. Idle time is not waste of time. Finally, there is renewal. Renewal is moments like these. It's when you step back. It's when you reflect on those harder questions. What are you really optimizing for? And are you headed in the right direction? Better life leads to better performance. It's not something you maintain on the side, it's the foundation for sustainable high performance. It's the outcome of the small things done consistently well. And that being said, none of us is perfect, but like my father used to say, we can all try to be a little bit better one day at a time. Thank you. <laughs>